Hi everyone, I'm Sinjara, I do Big Camp and Technica. Hi everyone. I'm Claudia, I do Big Camp and Technica too. Hello. <laughs> you guys are too kind. Anyways, um, so today uh, we, wanted to, we wanted to start off with a question, and that is what motivates you to organize? Like we all know, like I'm, I'm assuming most of us don't get paid, and it is a lot of time away from schoolwork and things like that. So what motivates you to organize? You there. I like helping people. It's just really nice to see like people um, come from a point where they're just, they don't know what to do to a point where they can accomplish anything. Yeah, that's awesome. It's seeing the transition from hackers coming in kind of with no confidence and leaving like, whoa, I could do something. Yeah, definitely. Anyone else want to give like one sentence reason why they like, like organizing? Hello, everyone. Felix from YCP Hacks. That's York, not New York, Old York, Pennsylvania. And Without us, there are thousands of students that wouldn't have a community they'd feel accepted in. So that's why I could organize. That's actually something like a different reason I've heard. That's actually a really important point to make that, you know, without us, it's like, what are people doing besides a hackathon? You know, what are, what are, what productive thing are you doing with their weekends? You know, <laughs> I put that word in there. Okay, so, well, so as me and Claudia believe, uh, as being directors and like being team leads for so long that we think a hackathon is only as good as its organizers. Like if you have good motivated organizers who really enjoy working and really organizing and finding the best deals, making it, like giving their all to make sure that hackers have a really good experience, that you know your hackathon itself is just gonna be like much more amazing than it would be if you had like unmotivated organizers who kind of just like did it. It's kind of like, eh. You want them? So one important thing is that we wanted to recognize is that organizing is really hard. And we don't, like I said before, we don't really get paid for it. We use our own time. So we don't want to be slowly miserable the whole time we're organizing, right? We want to have fun. We want to enjoy the people we work with. We really want to make the energy we put into the hackathon worth it for everyone. So what is organizer experience? How we define it is how the team treats its organizers how the organizers feel as they're planning. And there's a lot of factors that go, into, uh, that go into making sure they're having a good experience. Like, do they feel appreciated? Um, what, are the, what benefits are they getting out of it? And I think one, also one important thing that we don't really talk about is kind of like the team vibe in general. Like, is it really awkward where you don't know anyone? Or is it like, you think it's super lax or just not serious enough? There's so many things that go into it. And our main goal today is kind of is to find ways to you know, straighten your organizing community because ultimately you're gonna have a stronger hackathon at the end. So today what we're gonna talk about, what we hope to talk about, good Lord, I forgot we had a PowerPoint. We answer that and influencing factors. You know, you wanna feel good as an organizer? And the main goal as a director and as an organizing team should be to have Organizers who enjoy organizing, like that's your job. You wanna enjoy your job. So what we wanna talk about today is first we wanna talk about how to create a welcoming environment for beginners, people who are completely new to the team. You know, they're fresh, they're usually freshmen or sophomores who like don't know anyone. Um, how to motivate people to stay on your team. Usually, at least for us, it's like a long, like, you know, six month, three month process to organize a hackathon. You know, how do we make sure people don't fail and like they really wanna, you know, stick with it. And the last point we want to make that is going to like kind of like the meat of the presentation is, you know, the fundamentals of a team bonding event and like why they're so important. And we hope to like engage everyone and come up with like really cool ideas. You want to do this? Sure. So one of the great parts of having a hackathon that's spanned several years is that each year you get to have, yes, the people who have 
helped you in the past, but also new people, both freshmen, sophomores, people who are just coming into the university and they've heard about you already, they may have already attended and they think, wow, I really want to get involved with that. And so they have their excitement and so they've joined your team, but now it's important to make sure that they feel that they're a part of the team and that they're a valued member. Because when you're, especially if you're new to the university, when you're young and you're already joining a very close-knit community, like uh, I know our hackathons are, are very close, which is fantastic, but if you're a new member, it's difficult to become part of the family. And so especially for directors and executive directors, they need to be very conscious of the fact that new people need to be welcomed into the community and into the environment. You need to make sure that you are um, engaging with them regularly, you're asking their opinions on things, you want to make sure that they are participating in discussions and even simple things like they're attending almost all of the meetings, they're attending anything social, anything like that, just so that you can really incorporate them into the community that you've already developed. Yeah, one other thing I want to mention, it's not on, only on the directors and the team leads, it's also on the people who are already on the organizing team. You know, if there's someone new on your team, you should, on, and you've been there for a while, it's like your responsibility to like kind of mentor them into the team and be like, hey, this is what we do, this is how we're going to do it. Feel free to ask questions, and yeah, that you're going to be their biggest ally here. And one thing we wanted to talk about is some team initiation ideas for new members of your team or when you have or when you when you just choose your new organizing team for the next hackathon like what you guys do um, one example we can give is that for big camp we wanted to do kind of this like holiday picture once we um, just for our social media uh, so I like we wanted to use it as a way to like get everyone to really know each other because we we exponentially grew our organizing team this past year I would think so and a lot of us didn't know each other so we're just like we don't want people to not to know each other so we did, we did this thing called ramen night because you all know how like cheap ramen noodles are you just throw them in hot water we're all college kids like we should know um, we did a ramen night where we. Uh, a lot of people bought ramen and everyone else brought different like add-ins so like rotisserie chicken or like sriracha or just something to contribute and we all just got <laughs> also a coffee maker so we all just got a bunch of people to bring coffee makers to boil water and pour them in like really small little bowls and just make ramen and it was a really good time and, and one other point I want to make that these events don't have to be perfect like there were so many flaws I forgot to buy vegetarian ramen and I felt really bad, so I ended up ordering pizza instead. But it's like, it's all about <laughs> building the community. <laughs> it's all about building the community. So we want to maybe, you know, expand on that. What are other really cool team, like, team initiation ideas that you might have, or like have had before? Escape room? Yeah, that's a really fun one. You get to participate as a team, encourage people to work together. It's an awesome one. Anybody else? Hi, I'm Brandon with HackRU. Uh, over the summer, we had a, or rather by the end of last semester, we had a bunch of new directors come in. So over the summer, we just had like a team hangout in New York City, spent a whole day out and hung out, got to know each other. Absolutely, that's awesome. It doesn't have to be some big elaborate plan. There are some people in the thing. back. Oh, people in the back. <laughs> He's in my team and he was raising his hand too. Uh, we went rollerblading and got rollerblading lessons and just fell a lot as a team and got a photo of that. That sounds so cute. It's so cute. I want to do that. Yeah. So like we're going to expand on these topics. Oh, she's going to do it. Hi, I'm Velvi. I run Code Day Philly. And uh, one interesting, one of our interesting sponsors run a really upscale restaurant. So. We bring new um, team members to have the $120 cheesesteak. It's Who's wonderful. Who's sponsoring you? Uh, this, this guy who owns like 50 upscale restaurants, so. <laughs> Keeping it under wraps, all right. Do you, do you wanna give him to him? He's really excited. I love this participation, it makes me happy. Hi, my name is Paul. I'm from uh, University of Ottawa. We run Uyana Hack, and uh, I feel like this is pretty common. But over the summer, we rent a cottage. This year, was up in uh, beautiful Quebec. Uh, you know, hang out, get to know each other, go on a canoe, all that stuff. 
It's good. Mm, that sounds really nice and aesthetic. Yeah. So Very yeah, cool. we're gonna expand on these topics later when we talk about team bonding in general. We just wanted to like get the idea in your heads that you know you need it's not just a you need to somehow make your new team members feel invited. So our next point is how to motivate people to stay on their team. So say everyone, so it's been like a month since you started organizing, right? How do you make sure people don't fail? And it makes sense, some people, sometimes people have more important obligations and priorities that they just possibly can't put, put in more time to organize a hackathon, you know? But, you know, for the most part, you know, you wanna keep them because they're your team and you chose them for a reason. Maybe they have a really good skill or they just, you think they'd match the team really well. So how do we keep them? And my biggest point that I wanted to make the answer to that question is that you appreciate them. You know, as a director, as a team lead, you have to be very conscious of making sure you're like complimenting your team, like your team well. Say, like, say on your team someone like tries really hard but their outcome wasn't as good. It's still your job to make sure, like, you know, you thank them so much for their effort. Because it's not easy, like again, it's their time that they're spending, but they don't have to. And it's also really important to keep complimenting everyone and you know, make sure they're appreciated. Also, like, another small thing is like, we know like, ha like we, we try to keep everything super budget friendly. So like, we don't want to spend money on things that we don't need to. <laughs> so one thing that Claudia did once, I thought was really cute. She brought in cookies for the whole team right before a meeting. Like she baked all of them. They were, they were really cute. I thought it was, I, it wasn't, something really big, but it was something really small to like show your team, like, hey, we really appreciate your work. Here's the cookie. Now go finish the rest of the work you have to do. <laughs> so we thought that was really nice. Um, yeah, um, also, especially with view of a hackathon that's in the fall, maybe, because for example, Technica, um, a lot of their planning and organization takes place over the summer. And so it's difficult when people are in different time zones, they're not physically getting together every week. And so it's very important to, as directors and as participants to make sure, or as regular organizers, to make sure that you're actively engaging and making the extra effort to be connecting with each of your team members to make sure that they know that you appreciate all the work that they're doing on their free time off. Another small thing before we open up discussion and ask questions again is that um, and I think something that really that made me feel really like that I was appreciated was that so every team has their sub teams like design or marketing that do their own thing right so like you're not so someone from like logistics isn't going to be like hey we need to do this for marketing like all the time like if they have an idea that's cool like you should encourage networking within your teams but it's like, you know, everyone usually doesn't make everyone else's decisions. Something I really enjoyed, I really liked about Big Hip, this past Big Hip, when we were picking t-shirt designs and we had everyone vote on which one we liked the best. It's like the small things, and last year for Technica, uh, I asked people if they had really cool Tech Plus X ideas and had them vote on it. And it's just like, it's really nice for the whole team to make these co like cohesive decisions where they feel like their opinion is important or that it matters at some point. You know, just so those little things that make like make them know that you know they're not just networking or they're not just design. They're the whole team, and they are needed and special. So, okay, okay. we wanted to open up discussion for that. We'll open up later. So now we're going to talk about the meat of the presentation: team bonding. Okay, we think. So this past year, in organizing in general, I think team bonding has become really important. And it's kind of become a new thing within our organizer community at Big Camp and Technica. And I think it's helped so much creating our organizer community that we had just have people come back, like, come back over and over again to organize because they like it so much. And it's just, you know, it's something that's super underrated, I feel like. And I feel like some people are like, oh, it's just a hackathon, you know? They really need to know each other. But it's like, it's something that's super important and you're working with these people for like months and months on end. You want to like get to know them. They become your friends and your support. Like at a hackathon, who's gonna be there? Like for, like for you when you're like super like sleep deprived or a hacker complains about the Wi-Fi, who's there for you? It's your team, you know? So you want to get to know, know them on that personal level and you know, have a good time. So what we wanna talk about next, well this is kind of summary. So what we wanted to point out is team bonding is kind of a solution to the first things we pointed out, how to engage beginners in your team, and also how to motivate people to stay in your team. 
because these bonding events let you know give ch a chance for old members and new members to come together and get to know each other and also create a sense of community where it's like you know they kind of become your family i mean like i think big kip is a family yeah big kip is our family and it's like you don't want to, it, it becomes a sense of like pride where it's like, you don't want to leave them behind. You want to help them as much as you can. And like, you know, they become your, they come, you guys become really close and they become your friend group. And, you know, and that ultimately creates this, a better hackathon because everyone just wants to do their best with everyone else. Because, you know, happy workers create a happy environment. Yeah. So we want to talk about different team bonding activities, and we wanted to open up discussion on different kinds of team bonding activities you guys done, or you guys liked, or have done before. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you guys have some really cool icebreakers that's technically team bonding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like, yeah. Do you want to go down? Sure. As I walk, I'll describe one of the ones that we did this past year, because as Sanjana said, our team got huge this past year for BitCamp, and so our previous co-directors made an extra effort to make sure that we had a lot of bonding events. Um, and so one of them that we did um, actually th recently this uh, past semester was um, a bunch of us organized for ourselves to go camping. We, uh, it was partially sponsored by Big Camp, but also we pitched in, so it wasn't too expensive for the hackathon and it wasn't too expensive for the participants, but we all went for two nights. We slept in the rain. We did Korean barbecue over a fire pit. We <laughs> had lots of fun experiences and we all bonded together. So. Definitely recommend it. It also rains, so you know, we, so you guys know we bonded real hard under one tent. So it was a good time. Would recommend. Hi everyone, my name's Irfan. I'm currently a senior advisor to the Vandy Hacks organizing team. And something that our team does is in our Slack channel for our organizers, we have a hacker spotted channel. And well, let's take a step back. How do people communicate nowadays? They're on Slack, they're on GroupMe, they're on Messenger. People are always talking, right? So something that we like for team bonding is not to make it a one-off thing, but to constantly be like joking around, like memeing one another, trolling one another. So when hackers spotted, we usually just like take goofy pictures of each other if we see each other like in class or like in the engineering building. Um, I will say that I am the king of sniping and being sniped. Um, people have seen me do some really ridiculous shit and gotten photos of it. So I think channels like that and opportunities for people to consistently communicate and like share in that humor and those jokes is a great way for people to really bond throughout your organizing process. That's so important. Okay, this is going to sound real weird, but memes bring people together. <laughs> like I'm being real here because everyone likes a good laugh and especially within an the organizing team, there's so many inside jokes, you know? Like on Big Camp, we have a Big Camp sleep channel where if you keep, like catch an organizer sleeping, we just like put him in the channel or we have a random channel on Big Camp where it's like you can just talk about anything and just like, it's just, it's a good time. You guys should have like these meme channels. Uh, hi, my name is Sophia and I go to Texas A&M University and I do Tamu Hack. Um, one thing that I really liked as um, a new member last year and a returning member this year is game nights because a lot of people, I feel like some people don't really like board games or they don't know a lot of board games. So you get to really see someone's true personality through like deception board games and stuff like that. It's really fun. Yeah, you definitely you get to see their true personality. Um, can you pass it down, Hi, my name is August. I'm from Barcelona, Catalonia. Oh, that's so cool. And we, uh, I'm part of a group of, we make human towers. If, if, no, I don't know if you know what it is. That we climb like one each uh, on top of the other and we make like uh, 10 people tall castles. And it's like uh, when I started, it's like one of, uh, of one of the places like you really see like what is team working and team bonding because everyone has their a specific place. And we, and our group, we make like uh, team bonding uh, experiences for companies mostly. And it's like being like uh, a really good experience for everyone has tried. That does sound so cool. I'm going to start doing yoga for that though. Literally supporting each other. Mm -hmm. Hey there guys, uh, I'm Andres, Kanyu Hacks, Concordia University. 
Um, just kind of uh, wanted to give some ideas of what kind of things you guys could do for, for team bonding that I've seen kind of works for us. I think one of the most important things is um, to be able to encourage an uh, interdependent environment with your team because I think a lot of times what can be done by mistake is that we make really segregated teams. So they're their own team. Sponsorship is their team, logistics is their team, and we don't encourage them enough to interact with each other and help each other. So that's one thing that um, I try to do a lot with the, with the team for sure. Um, but also some cool little things is also trying to show a little bit of vulnerability. Um, I think that goes a long way because um, sometimes if even like let's say the people that are VPs, the president uh, is able to do that, it encourages other people to also be able to be have open communication with each other. Uh, which is kind of a, a nice little pathway uh, to get to team bonding uh, and have those experiences. And, and it's not just like a, a touchy-feely thing. Uh, in reality, it's, it's really about uh, being able to have the team um, communicate with each other and have the best results possible for whether it's for the hackathon, whether it's for uh, communicating any kind of um, future obstacles that may arise and they could prevent anything from happening that could be negative and could affect the result they're going to have at the end. So that's one thing I would, I would definitely recommend. And just for fun, if, uh, if they're interested, uh, the Myers-Briggs is a pretty cool test that you guys could try out. And it's actually one of these tests where it kind of tells us a lot about ourselves. It might not be 100% thorough, uh, but it does give us an idea of what kind of personalities we have, what kind of strengths we have and weaknesses. And if we're able to share that with each other, uh, it gives us an idea uh, about who the person is and we can learn new things about them. So it's kind of a nice little activity uh, that you guys can do to just uh, make the, f the team feel like they understand the other person more instead of having judgment or, or judging them for something they do, uh, which is a great way to, to bring them together. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I think, yeah, I think the first part where you said, we're just like, you know, people in logistics don't really talk to people in sponsorship and things like that. I think that is a very important point to make because literally, and this has happened over and over again. I've been in this game quite a while. I'm grandma at this point. But it's like, you know, these, it's like, so, like, people, like all the organizers themselves meet each other at the hackathon. And it's like, I feel like it shouldn't be like that. You should know each other. And you know, you should already like have that connection where it's like, oh, instead of just like, oh, we organize the same hackathon. It's like, oh, you know, this is really cool that we're doing this together. Thank you, for put, thank you marketing for putting in the effort. Thank you sponsorship for getting us money. And since we have to wrap up kind of soon, one last point I wanted to make is that bonding events don't have to be expensive. You know, a lot of the things we did for Big Camp have been on the organizer expense. But what we did a lot is we held grind nights for like doing like hackathon stuff. And we also did, so there's, you guys all go to colleges. There's so many events on campus where you can go as a team. Like we went to, we went to casino night together, all the Technica and Big Camp fam, and it was a really good time. We got that really nice picture in the front. That's all of us in the middle. And it's just, you know, you, sh you just have to get creative and, and work, with what your, uh, work with your budget and, you know, just, you know, have a good time. So organizing is hard work, but, you know, you as leaders should make it an effort to make a good time for everyone, not just for yourself, but everyone around you. And, you know, just have a blast at the hackathon and organizing it. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you.